Okay, and you are unmuted. And can you confirm that you can see your slide? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Nisha, take it away. Um, so, as our current climate is becoming more unstable, um, so is the security of our water supply. And this is something that kind of has been happening around Connecticut and in my area for a while. And during the summer, um, I really, I really wanted to get involved in water conservation. And um, another reason behind why I chose this project is because um, throughout my childhood, I've kind of had to move around a lot because of my father's job. And so living in different countries and um, observing how they use water has been very like eye-opening for, to understand um, how precious this resource really is. Mm -hmm. And um, again, for answering the question, why should we care about water conservation? Um, because our climate is so unstable that it's, because our, because our climate is so unstable, even if we feel like our supply of water is safe right now, it can change drastically in just like under, in a few months. And so that's been happening in Connecticut, especially with the 2018 drought. So, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to advance Nisha's slide, so she will need to tell me kind of when to move on. But I think oh. this this sounds like a good time to, yeah. to say, okay, well, but I guess before we say who took it, uh, describe the survey that you created. So um, part of my project was to help our town in an application to sustain for a sustainable CT. So that was already mentioned in another project. and. Um, I helped with the educational aspect of that, and I um, focus on water conservation. And part of my project was making a survey, which was educational, and I spread it through social media, websites, newspapers. Um, and it, basically, in the survey, I asked residents of my town, Darien, um, how they use water in different aspects of indoor, outdoor water usage. and after they answer the question, there would be like a paragraph with some tips and educational information on how they can improve on whatever they just answered. And I got the results from that survey and presented it at um, a water conservation workshop, which we held in our town um, as a kind of culminating event. Um, and we worked with people like the Aquarium Water Company, um, the Pollinator Pathway of my town, land trust um the environmental protection committee and so like all these different groups from our town kind of came together to talk about this problem water of conserving water and um before the the actual event i also wrote some articles in local newspapers kind of spreading the word about water conservation why we should care about it more education on it and also um like Kind of advertising the workshop before it happened right. and so after i got my responses at the time um most the majority of people that took it were, were from my town but there were also neighboring towns like stanford and canyon norwalk and even other places in connecticut so it was i felt good about the number of responses I got. all right so so one of the first questions i asked was um how much time you spend in the shower and the majority of people answered five to ten minutes and um, some recommendations I had for improvement were to consider things like low flow shower heads or find a way to time yourself with a clock or like through music and um, when I asked questions like do you take baths the majority of people said no which was good because it's really wasteful with water um yeah and then another question i asked was um about how long you run bathroom faucets a day and most people said um about like 10 minutes a day which was good and um I, another the next question on the slide um or that's you, had, you had mentioned that for your recommendations yep yeah i had some recommendations about um using low flow faucets and how they can use like pretty much 
almost half the amount of water that you use with regular faucets because of the um, differences in pressure. And yeah, um, I also asked um, how often um, how often do people wash dishes or how sorry how do they wash dishes? And um, there were lots of people said um, either water or energy efficient dishwashers. So that was that was good. I, that was a good response and. Um, some recommendations I had for improvement were to use um, drinking water from the refrigerator instead of waiting for tap water to get cool. Mm -hmm. um, washing produce in a bowl instead of using a faucet because I can really use a lot of water and thawing frozen foods in the refrigerator overnight instead of using water. That's something really small that can help. Um, you know, like scrape instead of rinsing dishes before putting them in the dishwasher. Um, and also like only using the dishwasher on a full load. And I also asked like about how long do you run kitchen faucets? And a lot of people said um, like around 15 minutes or less, which is also pretty good. Yeah, I do see, uh, I just want to, so a couple questions here. Uh, Laura said she, that she wonders how accurate people are with reporting how long they run a faucet. And she thinks she would underestimate for herself, you know, you're like, oh, I'm sure it's just a few minutes, just a few minutes. But, you know, it might add up more than they realize. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely an interesting, great point that she made. Uh, and she also asked, what did you use for your survey? Oh, I used um, Google Forms to make my survey. Um, so then I went into the this this aspect of outdoor water usage. So that's like, really important too. Um, so I asked like, how many times a week do you water your lawn, which is a big like contributor to this whole problem we have with, with water usage, because um, especially in my town, like everyone wants to have a nice lawn and they use their sprinklers all the time. And a lot of people said um, zero to two times a week, which going back to Laura's point, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure that's very accurate, but yeah, I think definitely um, some recommendations I had for improvement on that um, were to simply um, check for leaks in your system, which is, it seems like, okay, that's not going to make much of a difference, but it's really helpful. And also uh, watering your lawns during times of the day when less water can be lost to evaporation. Mm -hmm. So like in the morning when it's cooler and not on windy days, it just, these little things make a difference. Um, you could also consider moisture sensors in your irrigation system. And you can also reduce, um, you can also use native plants in your yard to um, reduce area for watering. And they're really um, like, they look really good and they're really pretty. So it's like a win-win. And um, you can also check your soil for nutrient content because better quality soil is better at retaining water and native plants can actually help with that. Um, I also asked if people use a rain barrel and most people said no, and it's something that can really help. Um, so like some recommendations would just be to consider getting one of those. And also um, the Aquarium Water Company has like some great promotions throughout the years for, for rain barrels. So go on their website and check that out. All right. <laughs> So then I went into um, recycling, which can really contribute to water conservation because of all the water that goes into making these different products that we can recycle. So um, like 90% of people said they recycle paper and you know, like a great majority of people said um, they avoid or reuse single use plastics. That was good because um, it's really surprising to learn how much water is gone into just making a small amount of plastic um and then for the next slide yep oops sorry um for bottles and cans a lot of people said they mm -hmm. reuse bottle recycle bottles and cans and some recommendations that i had were to find ways to recycle cardboard boxes from deliveries because some businesses can actually like accept your old boxes which is really helpful um also using less paper or plastic coffee cups because even though the coffee cup is like made out of paper it's actually not recyclable because they're lined with a certain 
plastic that's rarely able to be recycled. And you can also use, um, so you can also switch to digital versions of newsletters and um, paperless billing too, so just these little things. Um, and like a fun fact I said at, in the presentation to kind of make people think was more water is used in producing a plastic water bottle than the amount of water it actually holds. Wow. So that's like, it's just, that's another fact that you can keep in mind when you try to recycle plastic. Okay. Oh yeah. So this was um, an aspect of water usage that I was really fascinated by kind of virtual water use. And it's like going off of what I said before, all these different things you use in your everyday life, there's a lot of water gone into making that. So when you reduce your usage of those things, it helps with your water footprint in a way. Mm -hmm. So things like um, consumer goods and shopping for groceries. So I asked, um, and also the food you eat when you, yeah, how like how much water goes into that. So. I asked, um, like, what's your diet like? And a lot of people said they eat meat a few times a week. And I also asked, like, how often do you shop, not including groceries? And they were kind of very varied. There were varied responses on this. And some recommendations I have um, for improvement on this would be to kind of reuse as much as you can when you're shopping, donate as much as you can, buy reusable materials. And with diet, I would say um, just try to be a vegetarian maybe one day in the whole week and mm -hmm. save a lot of water. Um, if you if you do that, like if you just go vegetarian for just one day in the week, you can save about like 25,000 gallons of water a year, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. And um, um, another fact to kind of get you thinking is it takes around 2,000 gallons of water to produce a pound of beef um 519 to produce a pound of chicken and just 39 gallons to produce a pound of vegetables because all the water gone into making the kind of the plants that these animals graze on it all like adds up um in the impact of the environment okay excellent so then i also asked questions about kind of like energy and um one of the questions I asked was how much energy does your household use from renewable resources? And um, not a lot of people yeah. really use a lot of renewable resources. And um, that's, it's important to think about this because a lot of water is used in making um, electricity. So like the electricity companies, there's a lot of um, water that they use to produce the electricity. So when you think about, you know, like, using these everyday um, devices or like even just keeping your lights on in your house that is using water as well as electricity mm -hmm. so it's like a double whammy on the environment um so i also asked how many miles you drive a week and um a lot of people said like zero to 500 and it, that was a really good point laura made earlier today about people under underestimating um their answers and i feel like this is also a question where they might have underestimated. So like an interesting fact is it takes about three quarters of a gallon of water to make the gas used to drive one mile. So mm -hmm. it, really, it really adds up over time. So some recommendations I had were to consider solar power. Um, if you're not ready to power your whole house with renewable energy, you can just do like solar hot water heaters, which will make a difference. A solar oven maybe, solar air conditioning just like a part of your house you can also use like led energy efficient lights um and then you can even like carpool and you know like um just find ways to drive less so oh with the yep. yeah yeah so kind of like where my project has continued today the survey has kind of expanded um with the number of responses i have and it's still growing so Recently, it's been 243 responses, so I'm slowly uh, building up from there. And I've been working with um, um, the Dairy Environmental Group in my town, and she's been, the lady I've been working with has been spreading my like findings, surveys, and my tips to elementary schools and parents of kids at those elementary schools too. So it's kind of, um, 
I'm continuing with that. And um, I'm really like excited to know that my product's like still being used. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Go ahead. And also um, our town submitted their application for sustainable CT in August and we were able to get the bronze certification and they're actually gonna, with this kind of step, also try for silver this year. Oh, wow. And um, my project was kind of part of the criteria for that. So it was kind of embedded in like their um, application. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, um, yeah. You have some questions if you, if you wanna yeah. take some questions. Uh, yeah. Okay, Perry asks, how did you deliver the recommendations after someone submitted a response on, the, on your form? So like after they um, answered a question, there would be a paragraph after each question kind of just shown on the screen and they could read that. And so they would get it in real time, like as yes. they completed it. Okay. Um, I think any kind of follow up with the folks that participated in the survey that you plan to reach out to them again and maybe ask like, have they changed their water use habits or anything like that? Um, I haven't done, thought about that yet, but that's a great idea. That would be something I'd be interested in trying out now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Laura had asked if you know about the demographics of the, your survey takers, if they were homeowners, uh, do you think that they represent the general public? in your communities? Um, I think they mostly represented like homeowners, um, kind of residents of the, just I sp spread it out to on social media. So I'm not sure exactly that's a good question to add onto my survey actually. But um, there was also like um, a group at the senior center where mm -hmm. I printed out like, physical copies of the survey because I knew like they wouldn't really, they, it, would, it would be easier for them to access instead of going online. So I kind of tried to vary um, the responses, but that's another question I could add to my answer. But it sounds like you maybe covered a pretty wide range of, of folks. Yeah. Uh, oh, how to share your presentation to others. Sorry. Oh, uh, how can we share your survey? Uh, is there? Oh, um, there's a link to my survey. I can send it to you. And... Okay. Maybe when you're done with the video chat part, if you type it into the the oh, chat yeah. text box it's... and send it to everyone, so that yeah, I would everyone... love for, um, to spread it as much as I can. So okay, that... great. Um, uh, and. Chet says that this is an impressive project and he thinks his boss at UConn Extension would hire you in a second. <laughs> That's really nice, thank you. Um, and then a question about having all the recommendations maybe as a separate document for people to reference. Um, yeah. we, like I could help you put that together into like a PDF or something so that- um, Yes, I do to pull it out of, keep it in the survey, but then we can just have separate, uh, like a document, as a, a reference document for folks. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, Dave just wanted to clarify if you're open to people from other towns using the survey. Yeah, definitely. Yes, great, good. Uh, and Claudia is asking permission to use your presentation, your slides. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I will send that to her. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions for Nisha? This, I know that this has been a topic that you're pretty passionate about and I'm, I'm glad you were able to share it with our small group today. Um, I know it's, it's not exactly what we had envisioned when we thought we'd be in front of a larger audience at the CLCC today, but uh, I'm glad Glad we heard it and we are going to, I am recording this so we can get it on the web too. Yeah. Thanks, Nisha. Yeah.